Leah and her friend Katie settle into their new apartment in Ridgewood, Queens. Shortly after moving in, they encounter a group of Latinos in the vicinity. This group whistles and makes unsolicited comments as they pass by, making Leah particularly uneasy. Leah has a free-spirited vibe and loves to party. She's currently enrolled at New York College and, every now and then, indulges in recreational drug use. Despite her outgoing nature at parties, Leah tends to be low-key on campus and often goes unnoticed at college. One evening, she and a few friends who also occasionally use drugs decide to throw a party filled with alcohol and substances. In their partying, the group comments on how their current residence feels more unsafe compared to the typical dorm rooms that most college students live in. At one point, Leah approaches the apartment window and looks down. She spots a drug deal unfolding between the Latinos and another individual. While observing, one of her friends mentions they're out of weed. Eager to help, Leah proposes buying some for everyone. She hints at the recent transaction she witnessed outside when asked about her source. Leah braves the chilly night with her friend's encouragement and approaches the Latinos. As she nears, she notices them casually smoking cigarettes across the street. With determination, she engages them with her request. However, she's taken aback when one of the guys named Blue firmly turns her down, cautioning her against drug use. A bit dejected, Leah heads back. Another day at work, Leah is engrossed in her computer when her boss interrupts her. He questions her about her focus and tasks, then unexpectedly ushers her to his office. There, he displays a painting, and he seeks her opinion. As they converse, he indulges in some drugs and invites Leah to join. The situation rapidly escalates as he makes an inappropriate advance toward her. Their moment is interrupted by a knock from his secretary. Both Leah and her boss hurriedly adjust themselves. The secretary, clearly amused by the scene she's walked into, updates the boss. Both Leah and her boss gloss over the incident, returning to business as usual. Later, as Leah is on her way home, she decides to stop by a store for a beer. To her surprise, she runs into Blue once more. This time, they exchange chit-chats, and he formally introduces himself. Curious, Leah inquires if Blue is his actual name. He shares a bit about himself, revealing that his friends gave him the nickname because he is always sad. However, he happily mentions that he doesn't feel quite as Blue after meeting Leah. Leah invites Blue into her apartment and opens two bottles of beer, offering one to him. Despite her roommate's vocal reservations, Leah lets Blue stick around. Not long after, Blue's friends unexpectedly show up. While this feels like a breach of privacy, Leah is surprisingly calm and even seems to be in good spirits. The atmosphere quickly turns smoky as the group indulges in casual chatter, mostly revolving around drugs. Leah is intrigued and attempts to purchase drugs from them once more. This clearly displeases Blue leading him to exit the apartment abruptly. Curious and concerned, Leah trails behind. Outside, Blue opens up and explains his aversion to people who consume drugs, despite his involvement in dealing. He shares with Leah that the rooftop they're on used to be his and his group's regular spot for dealing, as a particularly nosy woman often patrolled the streets. Drawn to each other's vulnerability, Leah and Blue share a passionate moment, losing themselves in an eager embrace on the rooftop. The next day at work, Leah's boss approaches her desk. He leans over, feigning interest in assisting with her tasks, but soon reveals his underlying intentions by suggesting a meetup that evening. Leah politely declines, mentioning she's still settling into her new place. Intrusively, her boss picks up a card from Leah's desk, sent by her mother. Annoyed, Leah quickly retrieves it from him. After work, Leah returns to her apartment and is pleasantly surprised to find Blue waiting for her on the staircase. He hesitantly asks about her relationship status. A little puzzled, Leah asks why he'd make such an assumption about her. Over a shed beer, Blue admits his growing affection for her. The two exchange warm smiles, and while Blue assures her of his protective nature, Leah playfully reminds him of her independence. In a bid to bring her closer into his world, Blue later introduces Leah to his tata that evening. Once back in her room, Leah shows Blue a small packet of cocaine, questioning its value. He estimates it at $20, but she playfully counters, suggesting it might be worth $60. She then invites him to accompany her to a sitter party she plans on attending. Blue declines Leah's initial invitation, noting that he typically avoids dealing within the city's confines. However, Leah's playful insistence and the promise of a good time convince him. Together with their friends, Leah and Blue venture to a city club. That evening proves gainful for them, making a considerable profit from selling drugs. The night is a whirlwind of dancing, laughter, intimate encounters, and drug consumption. As dawn breaks, the group stumbles out, wearied by their exploits. Unfortunately, one of Leah's friends throws up right outside the school where she teaches. As they make their way back, tension arises between Blue and some of his friends, resulting in a heated argument. Fed up, Blue expels them from the cab and speeds off, exclaiming he's had enough of their negativity. 
In the heat of the moment, amidst the chaos, he and Leah share an intimate moment in the cab's backseat. Later, Blue pulls over at a somewhat sketchy location in a less reputable part of the city. He instructs Leah to wait, then disappears down a staircase. After some minutes of anxiously waiting, Leah steps out of the cab and sits on the stairs. A middle-aged man with a cigarette in hand soon joins her. They share a brief, intense moment of silent understanding. He obliges when Leah requests a cigarette, lighting one up for her. As he departs, he leaves her with a warning to stay safe. Suddenly, Blue reappears, urging Leah to follow him downstairs. Inside, a tense confrontation unfolds. Blue pleads with a bulky, imposing drug supplier, evidently owing him money. A table laden with cocaine stands between them. With a suggestive nod, the dealer invites Leah to sit on his lap. Sensing the gravity of the situation, Leah obliges, then shares in the drug offered. Following a tense negotiation, Blue manages to renegotiate his terms and quickly departs with Leah. Blue takes Leah to a quiet restaurant once they've distanced themselves from the dealer. He reveals the dangerous nature of the man they just met, recounting a gruesome tale of how he harmed his cousin by taking out his cousin's eyes with a fork. Still coming to terms with the gravity of the situation, Leah expresses her relief at having secured the cocaine. Blue then confesses that dealing with Leah's city friends might be his ticket out of debt. Attempting to change the mood, he asks Leah about her taste in Italian food right as a man knocks on the restaurant window, signaling Blue. Leah, trying to lighten the atmosphere, jests about her love for Italian cuisine. Blue assures her of a grand Italian dinner outing later that evening. As he rises to attend to the unexpected visitor, he carefully places his stash of cocaine beside Leah, asking her to watch over it. Lost in thought about the evening's potential menu, Leah nods. After Blue exits the restaurant, Leah, holding her drink, roams around, taking in the ambience. Through the window, she catches a glimpse of Blue making a drug transaction with the man who had knocked earlier. Absorbed in watching the exchange, her drink nearly slips from her hand when a sudden commotion unfolds. Blue's voice rises sharply, followed by the heavy footsteps of police officers. Before she can process what's happening, Leah witnesses Blue being handcuffed and shoved into a police car over a small packet of cocaine they discover in his pocket. She stands frozen, a mix of shock and fear evident on her face. The following days made Leah's life take a spin. Yearning for Blue's return, she turns to cocaine for comfort. The day she visits Blue in prison, she ensures she looks her best. Blue, while elated to see Leah, cannot help but express his regret. His friend, Kilo, warned him about the risks of dealing in the city. And now, a potential 20-year sentence for a mere 10 ounces of cocaine appears over him. However, Leah drops a bombshell. She had discreetly taken the package of cocaine that fateful night, implying the police never confiscated the total amount. Blue's expression shifts from disbelief to elation. Once his joy subsides, a somber Blue advises Leah to return the unconfiscated package to his dealer, Lloyd, fearing revenge from the latter due to his arrest. The gravity of his situation becomes clear while he hopes for early release. Snitching on his fellow dealers isn't an option. Leah, ever the optimist, assures him they'll find a way out. Confident in her problem-solving abilities, seeking legal counsel, Leah consults a lawyer, laying out the details of Blue's case. The lawyer's skeptical gaze doesn't deter Leah, who passionately defends Blue's character. She insists that Blue's primary motivation for dealing was to fund proper healthcare for her sick grandmother. Despite his reservations, the lawyer agrees to represent Blue and outlines potential defense strategies. However, there's a catch Leah would need to accumulate $25,000 for his services. Resourceful as ever, Leah decides to sell a portion of the confiscated cocaine to her boss. She divides the rest into sellable quantities alongside her friends, planning to peddle them at a local bar. As their operation commences, the boss bouncer spots Leah transacting with Blue's acquaintances. Taking offense, he confronts the group, landing a punch on Kilo. Through the commotion, Leah remains steadfast, continuing the drug trade even as her friends scatter. After departing on her own, Leah arrives at her apartment only to find Lloyd, the dealer, waiting for her. His behavior is threatening as he demands money and manhandles her, hinting at how vulnerable she is. She protests, saying she barely knows Blue, but assures Lloyd he'll get his money. Shaken from the encounter, she seeks comfort in her boss's arms later that night. The following day, she confides in him about her financial distress and the menacing visit from Lloyd, but leaves out the details of the abuse. Overwhelmed with emotion, tears stream down her face as she gets up to leave, but her boss stops her. He decides to take her out to distract her, and they end up at a high-class nightclub. Swept up in the glamour and energy of the night, Leah loses her reserves, dancing with wild recklessness. As the night goes on, the mix of emotions and substances takes a toll, and she faints in the middle of it all. The sunlight streaming into the club wakes Leah up. She finds herself in a daze, trying to piece together the events of the night. Returning to her boss's place, he and a colleague are congratulating her, 
but Leah's heart sinks the money she had collected is nowhere to be found. Desperation rises as she pleads with them, convinced she had it before she blacked out. Troubled, Leah returns to her lawyer's office. She is struggling to stay composed and breaks down, the weight of her recent events too much to bear. Sensing her vulnerability, the lawyer invites her out, seemingly offering comfort. But the night takes a sinister turn. Leah, heavily intoxicated, can barely stand. She becomes a victim of the lawyer's malicious intentions in this vulnerable state, and she's taken advantage of. Devastated and lost, Leah locks herself in the bathroom, where her roommate eventually finds her in a state of complete distress. Leah's mental and emotional health plunges over the next few days, leaving her almost rigid. One morning, a familiar face appears beside her bed blue. The sight of him refreshes her spirit. Eager to reconnect, they take a walk outside. In a surprising move, Blue proposes to her, catching Leah off guard. She hasn't yet revealed the recent traumatic events, including her encounter with Lloyd. Their brief moment of happiness shatters when Lloyd emerges from the shadows, assaulting Blue. Desperate to help, Leah tries to intervene but is quickly overpowered. Fueled by adrenaline and desperation, Blue manages to defend himself using a nearby bottle, but the argument ends fatally for Lloyd. The aftermath is grim. Blue is arrested once again, this time facing charges of murder. Leah watches in despair, their fleeting reunion turning into another goodbye. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.